Okay, we have covered the up to section 1.4. Now, we will cover the last two, two sections of chapter 1, quantifiers and nested quantifiers. Uh, this quantifier means uh, what? 수량사. All mm -hmm. or boss처럼 양을 나타내는 이 한정사나 대명사를 이 quantifier라고 합니다. Okay, quantifier. Uh, if P of X is a statement involving the variable X and D is a set, then for each X in D, the P of X is a proposition, uh, means P of X is a proportional function, 명제 함수, or predicate with respect to D, okay. uh, where D is the domain of discourse. 이거를 담론 영역이라고 얘기하고 universal set of p of x 라고도 얘기합니다. Okay. So now we think uh, the propositional function p of x. Okay. Here p of x is a property that element of x has. Here. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so when we have, uh, we, when we have this uh, set x is in x such that p of x is then this is a set of all element x in x, little x in capital X, such that p of x is true. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, here's one example. The statement p of n, uh, which is n is an odd integer, then p of n is a propositional function with the domain of discourse g plus, which is the a set of positive integers. Since for each n is in the set of positive integers, then uh, p of n is a proposition. For example, when n is equal to 1, uh, we obtain the proposition p of 1, which is 1 is an odd integer. Is true. This is a true statement. 1 is an odd integer. When n is equal to 2, then P of 2, proposition P of 2 means 2 is an odd integer. This is a false statement. So it is a proposition. We can tell it is true or not. Okay, when n is equal to 3, P of 3 is another proposition, which is a true statement. So for example, this P is a propositional function with the domain of disclosure G plus. 그러니까 프로포지션들의 집합인 p of n을 우리가 함수로 생각할 수 있고 함수의 도메인이 이제 인이죠 양, 양의 양의 정수인 것이죠. Uh, we obtain the class of propositions. So we can, we can obtain the uh, class of propositions p of i's. Each of these propositions are either true or false. Above. Here's the definition. If p, is a if p is a propositional function with domain of discourse D, then statement for every x, uh, p of x is true if and only if, if for all x, uh, p of x is true, like this. So this is a, is a universal quantified statement of p of x. Universal quantified statement of p of x. For every x, that p of x is true or false. We can, uh, it's a proposition. Okay. So here the symbol, the flipped A means for every. The symbol A is called, is a, a universal quantifier. 버, 이걸 그 범용 정량자, 우리말로 쓰는데, uh, A를 뒤집어놓은 자로 써서, for, 그 for every 이렇게 쓰지 않고, 이렇게 simplify 해서 이렇게, 쓰, 이렇게 씁니다. Yeah, we use this statement uh, in this a form with uh, this uh, universal quantifier flipped A. So for all x, p of x, like this, is true. State, this is a statement. For all x, x is in D, then p of x is true. If, so if this statement is true, then we can write it in this form. For all x, x is in D, 
of x is always true. The so statement, if if a statement, this statement is false, that means p of x is false for at least one x in d. So if that statement is false, then there exists some x that makes p of x its false statement. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. So it is called a counter. Exist. So here, this x, which makes p of x is equal false, this x is called a counter example of that statement. Mm -hmm. That statement, proposition. Mm -hmm. Counter example. Next. Consider the universally quantified statement this. For all x, x square is always greater than or equal to zero, where the domain of this course is R. Okay, consider this, whether it is true or not. X square is always non-negative. So this is true. For all real number X, X square is positive or zero. Both. Because of that, so X square is always non-negative. So this, uh, but, but, uh, but, but the, the, the universally quantified statement uh, of this is false if there exists there exist one x in the domain of this course, the proposition is false. Okay. So, so when we have a counterexample, that statement is true. But this is a true statement. But when we have a false, when we have an x which makes p of x is false, then that x is called a counterexample. Here, this is an example. A universally quantified statement. Uh, we suppose we have uh, uh, this uh, universally quantified uh, statement. Like for all x, x square minus 1 is bigger than 0 when the domain of this course is real number. Then uh, we know x square minus one is zero is positive is positive is false because if x is equal to one then one square minus one is equal to zero which is not bigger than zero so we have a counter example x is equal to one we have x is equal to one that makes this uh, statement false so, so one is a this value one is a counter example of this statement. Okay, although there are values of x that makes the propositional function true, but if there is a one counter example, uh, then that whole universally quantified statement is uh, false. Uh, example uh, seven, the p, if p is a propositional function whose domain of discourse is the set, EIs, then the following pseudo code determines whether uh, this uh, uh, statement is true or false by this. Just uh, checking from checking i from 1 to n, then whether you check uh, the p of d1, d2, and di's and dn's are uh, a, ne a negation of this. If, if the negation of uh, p of di is true, then it terminates. So, so we, the, this this for loop examines the numbers di's in the domain of this course by one by one. If uh, for uh, if this uh, this uh, uh, for all di p of di is false, then the condition this uh, negation of p of di is in uh, in the in the if statement is true. So the code returns false and terminate. So then, and it gives us a counterexample di's. But for all di's, if p of di's uh, are all true, then the condition negation of p of di is false. The loop uh, runs to completion. Uh, the, so the loop for loop runs to completion after which the code returns true and terminate. So for all, all for all x p of x is true, then the loop for, loop for necessarily runs to completion so that the every member of domain of this course is checked to ensure that p of x is true for all every x. Okay, so actually 
these are the argument. These, so this check uh, so, so with this pseudo code, the, we can check whether this uh, sentence is true or not. If we found one counter example, it comes out if it's a false. If we, we cannot find a counter example and we check the every di's uh, to uh, p of di's is true, then it terminates with uh, the st sentence uh, is uh, true. And that's the kind of code that we check whether the given statement is true or false. Yeah, here. Uh, for x, p of x is false, the loop uh, terminates uh, false. So the here, the variable x uh, uh, is uh, a free variable. The variable x in the universally quantified statement for all x in, for all x, uh, p of x is a bounded variable. Here, this here, here, the statement with free variable is not a proposition. A statement with no free variables is a proposition. Mm -hmm. So we should have, uh, we should have a statement with uh, uh, bounded variables to be checked. Mm -hmm. Here also, for all x, p of x, uh, then this statement is the same as for all x, p of x, or for any x, uh, p of x. And this is our only equivalent statement. The symbol A may be read for every, or for all, or for any. To prove uh, this uh, statement is true, we must uh, check every value of x in the domain of this course and show that for all x, p of x is true. This is the way to check it. Here, the domain of this course D, we write a universal quantified statement as for all x in D, uh, p of x is whether it's true or not. So, so this is the typical uh, way that we do uh, use. The universally quantified statement this, uh, for all x, if x is bigger than one and then x plus one is bigger than one, is true. Okay, this is true. Here is the proof. Verify the statement. If x is bigger than one, then x plus one is always bigger than one. Isn't it? This is true for every real number x. So it is true for any real number x. Either x is less than or equal to 1 or bigger than 1. For any real number, if x is bigger than 1, if we add one more, then still it's bigger than 1. Okay? So this is always true. So this is, is peculiarly uh, true. It's always true. It's, uh, what? it's, it's uh, always true whether x is uh, or any numbers. In any case, whether it's bigger than one or less than one is always true. So this uh, universally quantified statement is always true. Okay? Definition 1.59. Mm -hmm. Here. So let P be a proportional function with domain of discourse D. The statement here, there exists X such that P of X. This is if and only if there exists x such that p of x. This is the, uh, the that this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, statement is an existence, existentially quantified statement. Here, the symbol e flipped e means there exists. The, this symbol is an existential quantifier of p of x. Okay. Exist. Existential quantifier. So, uh, the existence, uh, the statement this is true if p of x is true for at least one x in d. Okay, if there exists one x in d, in domain uh, that satisfies p of x, uh, then this statement is true. Uh, this statement falls if for every x in d, uh, if p of x is false, then that statement is false. That statement is false. Okay. So this existential quantifier. Okay. So we read this as there exists x such that p of x. There exists, there is at least one x such that p of x. Or for some x, uh, p of x is true. Something like that. 
these are all same. Here, consider the, consider the existentially quantified statement uh, when the domain of discourse is R. Uh, okay, here, solution. Is, uh, let's check whether this statement is true or false. This statement is true because if we choose x is equal to 2, then 2 square plus 1 and 2 over 2 square plus 1 is 2 over 5. It satisfies. So there exists x in real. There is x is equal to 2 in real that satisfies this. So we uh, have x that satisfies this. So this quantified statement is true. Okay, mm -hmm. but here, to verify the exi this existentially quantified statement is false, then we must show, we must show, uh, there is no such x in real that satisfies this. Let's check it. Let's, let's simplify this. Mm -hmm. let's, let's simplify this. This can be simplified, but. This, what, this, uh, this, uh, this statement, uh, mm, this statement is, uh, what is this? Uh, we know, we know, 1 over x squared plus 1 is always less than or equal to 1 because x is a real number, x squared is a positive number. So this uh, uh, denominator, this 1 plus x squared is always bigger than 1. So 1 over x squared plus 1 is always less than 1. This is always true for any real number. So there is no real number that satisfies this left-hand size is bigger than the right-hand size 1. OK? So this is always uh, false. Mm -hmm. So the statement is false for every real number x. So that. Uh, uh, quantified the statement is uh, false. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next example tells us, uh, suppose that P is a proportional function whose domain of discourse is this set. The following pseudocode determine whether there exists X such that P of X is true or false. Then this uh, loop gives us uh, the conclusions. Mm -hmm. The alternative way to prove, uh, to write this is uh, there exists an x such that p of x, or for some x, p of x is, uh, and for at least one x and p of x. The symbol x may be the existence. So yeah, we I explained it once before. Mm -hmm. Next, here. For some n, if n is prime, then n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus n plus 4 are not prime, not prime, mm -hmm. when the domain of this course is d plus. This uh, statement is uh, true. Uh, when n is prime, some of these are not prime. That's what it says. We can find at least one positive integer n that makes conditional proposition that n is prime, then uh, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus n plus 4 are not all, not, uh, not all of them are prime. Some of them are not prime. Some of, some of these are uh, not prime. That sentence is uh, true. Okay. For example, when n is equal to a uh, prime number 23, then 24, 25, 26, 27, as you see, if, if it's uh, usually, usually uh, 23, if it's a, it's a prime number, then usually, usually it is a negative, uh, what, the, what the odd numbers. When you add one, usually it goes to even numbers, which is not a prime number except two. Mm -hmm. You can easily check the small numbers uh, and for very large numbers, uh, there's no prime number which is uh, uh, even, so all the prime number except two are uh, odd, uh, odd numbers. When you add uh, one, two, three, four, and those are 
some of those are not prime numbers easily. So, so that's the another easy uh, example. And next, generalized Morgan's law for logic. This is it. If P is a proportional function, each pair of proposition in A and B has the same true state, truth values, either both true or both false, like this. Negation of all x such that P of x is equivalent to there exists x such that uh, not p of x. These are, these are, these two are logically equivalent. Okay. And also negation of there exists x such that p of x is equivalent to for all x, uh, for all x, uh, the such that uh, negation of p of x. So from here, what you can think is, uh, if these are true, that we will be proved. It will be proved. Uh, but here is, so when you have negation of something, then when, the neg when this negation goes to inside, uh, just replace uh, this for for all to exist, uh, and uh, for a statement p of x, uh, you just give a negation. Here, when when you have the negation of this. Uh, uh, sentence uh, just uh, switch this exist to, to for all and just give negation to p of x. So this, uh, this you can easily switch this, those two uh, state equivalent statement. So we can uh, we can prove uh, this here. If proposition uh, this is true, then proposition uh, suppose this is true and. Okay, here, we just go follow. Uh, negation, if, if this is true, then, the neg the, then when you drop the negation, then the proposition itself should be false. So by the definition, the P of X is false for at least one X in the domain of this cursor. So, so proposition for all X, P of X is false. Okay, so, uh, so P of X is false for at least one X in the domain of this course. So the negation of P of X is true for at least one X in the domain of this course. So this is what this says. Isn't it? So this argument gives us the first and the, the, the last, the, the next. Uh, the state, this the argument gives us the proof for the uh, B part of the equivalent statement. So, mm -hmm. okay. So this is a very imp very useful tool uh, that you're gonna use over and over and again, over and again. Next proposition is uh, every rock fan loves U2, and U2 is an uh, Irish rock band from Dublin. Write this negation symbolically and in word. Here, uh, P of X. Is a proposi propositional function that X loves the lock band U2, then symbolic logic of the proposition is for all X, uh, P of X. That's uh, this uh, sentence, this proposition. Okay. Then negation of this proposition is what? Is what? Just uh, negation of this is change uh, for all to exist and P of X to negation of P of X. Okay. That's it. Which means there exists a lock fan who does not love you too. Isn't it? That's it. So, so you can uh, you can use these notations and the De Morgan's law for logics uh, when you make when you find the uh, the negations in symbolic forms. The proposition, the next proposition is, just, is just some bird cannot fly. Write its negation symbolically and in word. Yeah. So, X, so if, we, if we make a proportional func uh, function as X flies, uh, X flies, then symbolic logic for uh, the pr proposition is uh, there exists a bird X such that cannot fly, isn't it? So this is it. There exists X such that not cannot uh, fly. 
Okay. So negation of this is this, which means it's equivalent to, so it, the exist change as a for all, and negation and another negation here that gives us just P of X, which means every bird, for all X, every bird can fly. That's, that's, that's the negation. Okay. So the, uh, the, the, the Morgan's law for logic can be used in it. That's important because uh, when we have these many propositions together, the universally quantified propositions generalize the proposition like this. Here, in the sense that individual propositions P1, P2, Pns are replaced by an arbitrary family, P of X, where X is in the domain, domain of discourse. Then this can be replaced. This can be replaced as for all X such that P of X, like this. So what that means is if all these are true, then this means PI is true for every I, then, then the, the proposition for all X, P of X is true. That means P of X is true for every X in the domain of this course. So when we have this, we can use the Morgan's law very effectively when we have many propositions. Okay, here is the example. First, uh, simple example. Domain of discourse of proportional function P is this, uh, then for all P of X is equivalent to P of minus one and P of zero and P of one, like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, uh, this, uh, the existence of quantified proposition, generalize the proposition like this in the sense that this can be replaced this. Mm -hmm. okay, same. The domain of this course of propositional function P is one to four, the same, yeah, like this. Here, the rule of inference for quantified statement for all X such that P of X is true, okay? By definition, P of X is true for every X in the domain of this course D, and in particular, D is in the domain uh, under D, then P of D is equal to true. Then this argument uh, like for all X such that P of X, then P of D, if D is in D, then this should be valid, isn't it? Since P of D is true for every X, so if, the D, D, uh, if D is a uh, subset, then in, for those Ds in the subset, then P of D should be true. Okay. Uh, now we're gonna uh, state the, the rule of inference thesis with the universal uh, uh, instantiation. It's the universal instantiation uh, in our world which is chunching uh, yeshiwa. It means 추상적인 것을 구체적인 예를 통해서 표현하는 것을 we call universal instantiation. These are the rule of universal instantiation. Here, rule of inference. For all x, p of x, then fit, then implies, then therefore p of d uh, is true if d is in d. If p of d for every d in d is true, then uh, for all x and p of x is equal to x. This is called, a, this, this first part is called chunching uh, yeshua, universal instantiation, and this is called uh, universal generalization. Generalization. And for this, for there exists x in P of x, therefore P of D for some D in D. This is called the existential instantiation. 존재 예시야. 존재한다는 것을 이제 예를 들어서 보여주는 것이고, for D, P of D for some D of D is in D, then there exists x in P of x. 그러니까 D 안에서 그 n 어떤 D에 대해서 P of D가 추출하고 한다면 P of x를 만족하는 x가 존재한다. 예, 그것이 이거 그러니까 이것은 D 안에서 있었던 예시를 통해서 전체에서 그런 것이 존재한다. 그 존재성을 일반화시키는 그런 얘기로 existential generalization이라고 부르는 거예요. Anyway, yeah, this this is the kind of uh, the the four types of rules of inference. Okay. With those, we see the next example. For all x in G plus n square is always greater than or equal to n is true. Okay, here, using universal instantiation, we conclude that 
54 is a positive integer. So 54 square is always must be bigger than 54. That is true for all. So it should be true for, for any particularly chosen number 54. Isn't it? This is always, okay. This is, okay. If this is true, then this is true. That's the one example of universal instance uh, using of universal inst instantiation. Next, write the following argument symbolically then using the rule of inference show the argument is valid. For all x in R, uh, if x is in I, which is an integer, then x should be a quotient, the, the, the quotient, uh, the rational numbers. Okay? Uh, so if, the, okay, uh, we show this, uh, the, the, the argument is valid. So, so with this, the root 2 is irrational, therefore root 2 is not integer. With this, okay, we can say root 2 is not an integer because root 2 is not rational. Here is the argument. Yeah. Yeah. Which means is if I is the integer, if x is an integer, so if a real number x is an integer, then it is a rational number. 정수면 유리수여야 된다는 어, 센텐스를 가지고 이걸 이용해서 루트 2가 루트 2가 이니즈가 아니라는 걸 보이는 거예요. But we know root 2 is not a rational number. Therefore, it cannot be an integer number. If it is an integer number, it, if root 2 is an integer number, it should be a rational number. But root 2 is not a rational number, so it cannot be an integer number. 무슨 말인지 알겠죠? 우리 이것이 추루라 그러면 루트 2는 이니셜 넘버가 될수 없다. 왜냐하면 루트 이디셜 넘버, 이디셜 넘버가 아니기 때문에 이니셜 넘버가 될수 없다는. 예. So this argument yeah, can be explained, can be written in this. For all x, if p of x implies q of x is true, but uh, but but root 2 uh, is not a rational number, so it's not q of root 2. So it's not a rational number. So this is not true. So it cannot be. This P of X cannot be true. Like this. The P of root 2 cannot be true. So if okay, so, so using the uh, universal instantiation, we can conclude this. If, if root 2 is a integer number, then root 2 should be a rational number. But root 2 is not a rational number, so root 2 cannot be an integer number. So we did use the modulus tolerance to draw these conclusions. Okay, this argument is called universal modus tolerance. Okay, now we are in the last section of this chapter. Nested quantifiers. Nested quantifiers. Consider the statement, the sum of any two positive real numbers is positive. For all x, y in R, with x is positive and y is positive, then x plus y should be positive, isn't it? If x and y is a positive real number, then x plus y should be a positive real number. We can rewrite it with two universal quantifiers. P of x, y denote the x is positive and y is positive. Then x plus y is positive. Okay. This can be symbolically written as this. For all x, for all y, P of x, y, which means, P of x, y means this. Okay. In other words, for x, for y, if x is equal, bigger than 0 and y is bigger than 0, then x plus y is bigger than 0. So all this can, this can be written in this way. The domain of discourse of two variable proposition function P is x close, x Cartesian x, x cross x. Okay. The domain is a, a cross product of R and R. Multiple quantifiers for x, for y are nested quantifiers, are called nested quantifiers. Here, uh, for all m, there exists n such that m is less than n in world, then uh, the domain of this course is g plus g. Uh, for this means for every m, there exists n such that m less than n. Okay, uh, which means there is no greatest integers. 
Okay. Yeah, this from this argument, yeah, we can tell that there's no greater greatest integers. If we have a integer, then there exists a bigger integer, isn't it? So that means uh, we cannot find the greatest integer. Okay. 무수히 많은 integers 있기 때문에 어떤 큰걸 잡아도 더큰게 존재한다. 는 것을 표현할 때 이렇게 표현할 수 있다는 거죠. 수학적으로. 오케이, okay, next. The proposition is everybody loves somebody. Here, letting this L of x y make this uh, nested uh, the quantifiers. The, let that be a statement that x loves y. x loves y. Then everybody requires universal quantification, and somebody requires the existential quantification. So write this is uh, in symbolic way. Then for all x, there exists there exist y such that L of x y, that x loves y, isn't it? Okay. There for all x, there exists y such that x loves y. Okay. Here in uh, in in other words, for every person. X, there exists a person Y such that X loves Y. This, this, so these are all the same sentence. So this sentence can be written as this. With those uh, universal quantifiers. Okay? Note that. Uh, this is not, uh, but, but if you change this for all and for there is, if you switch this uh, A and E, then this sentence is not correct interpretation of original statement because uh, this means uh, there exists a person X such that for all Y that X loves you which means somebody loves everyone. So this is not the same meaning of this. Everybody loves somebody is not the same as somebody loves everyone. So you, when you switch this uh, uh, universal quantifiers uh, that makes a big confusion. So the order of quantifier is important. Order is important. So statement of this is true, but if you change it, uh, x, y, I think, yeah. Anyway, next, hit 1.63. The statement is uh, this. Uh, the domain cursor is Cartesian product of R and R. Then the conditional propagation, proposition is this. If uh, it's true, if this is true, hence the, this statement is true. In other words, what that means is if X and Y are positive, then some X plus Y is positive. So this is uh, the other way of writing that we mentioned. The statement is this. And yeah, this, we can, this is true. The statement is true. Okay. And the same thing. Next, here. Th what about this statement? Uh -huh. For, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so, well, uh, ch uh, consider this th statement uh, and check whether this statement is true or false. Okay. Uh, X is positive and Y is positive. Then X plus Y is n always not zero. Is this true for all X and Y? If we choose x is equal to 1 and my y is equal to minus 1, then uh, x is uh, positive and y is negative. Okay? But x plus y is equal to 0. So it violates the conclusion. So it is a false statement. So this statement is not true in general. And this pair x is equal to 1 and y is equal to minus 1 is a, an example, is a counterexample, is one a counterexample. Okay. So when you write then the sentence proposition that can be true or false, the p is a propositional function with domain of this course of this, these are domains, and the following pseudocode determine whether uh, this uh, uh, statement is true or false. So we need uh, uh, two loops for di's in the first x, uh, first uh, domain and the 
the another J uh, for the next uh, domains. If so, to, the, then we can we can check all the statement for each of the DIs and DJs uh, whether the statement is true or false. And next, the statement here. For all x, there is y such that p of x, y. The domain is this cross x cross y. And then this, uh, but, uh, uh -huh. for all x, there is p is true. But if, if there exists uh, x uh, in x such that p of x, y is equal to false uh, for all y is in y, then this uh, statement is false. If this is true for all x and y, then it's true. But there exists some which makes p of x, y is false, then the statement is false. It depends on when you have a statement. Mm -hmm. It's the way. But yes, there are many, many examples. What about this? The statement, this. The domain is this. Domain is, the domain of this course is g plus cross g plus. Uh, there is there is x namely x is equal to one such that x is bigger than y. Uh, then then x uh, then it's false for all y in G plus. Hence the statement false. This is an example of false statement. Mm -hmm. now for all x, there is the y such that x is bigger than y. For all x, there exists y such that x is bigger than y. Next, uh, this is one more example of the pseudo code. Mm, the check. I think this is the end of. Uh, read this example. Yeah. Mm, that's. The, I think that's the end of. Oh no, there are more. Okay. Go this. Uh, example nine. Statement. For there is uh, there is x for y such that x is less than equal to y. The domain of this course is G plus, cross G plus. There is at least one positive integer G, integer X, namely X is equal to one for each X is less than or equal to Y is true for every positive integer Y. So this statement is true. In other words, the smallest positive integer is one. These are all positive integers. Positive integers. So, uh, so there exists, there exists a small list positive integer which is one that makes this true. Mm -hmm. 이제, 이제 이게 둘다 positive integer에서 고르면 이게 x가 모든 것보다 작은 uh, positive integer one이 언제나 존재하죠. 따라서 this is the right state. This is true statement. Mm -hmm. Next example, well, the same yeah, similar things. There are many many that you can think. The, the, this make this uh, make you do have a practice uh, to use uh, this unify the universal quantifiers. <coughs> Let's check one more statement here. There is the x, uh, and there is the y, such that this. And this statement is true because uh, there exists at least one is uh, x, and this one is uh, y such that x, y is equal to 6 always uh, because uh, x is a composite. 이게 합성 함수기 때문에 곱해서 6이 되면서 1보다 큰게 언제나 존재한다. 그런, 그런 얘기죠. Mm -hmm. Okay. And similar examples are here. And Morgan's law. Here. For here. So, using the generalized Morgan's law for logic, we can find the negation of this. The negation of this is just switch it, or make it exist. Exist, so, and next, negation of all this part. So, in here, change the existence to for all and the negation on P. So, we can easily get the negation by using the generalized Morgan's law for logics. Mm -hmm. And write the negation of this the seemingly, seemingly here. Negation of this gives you existence for, for all and negate everything. Then it gives you the negation of A to existence and negation of this, which is it is less than one and two. 
the negation is bigger than or equal to one. So we can easily find the negation of it by using the, uh, the Morgan's laws. And this can be used here. This is, a, this is an interesting example here. I told that uh, some of students have learned already about the epsilon delta argument, which was taught in the calculus class here. Limit, and you have learned this limit concept in high school years. And this, this, means, for every, this means for every delta bigger than zero, there exists epsilon, positive epsilon, such that uh, the absolute value of x minus zero is in between zero and epsilon implies uh, this. So if uh, uh, this uh, means this, this can be written as for all delta, there exists positive epsilon that implies, this implies this, such that this implies this. And this is this, so uh, analysis of this can be uh, made with this uh, universal quantifier. And that's, uh, this is a kind of uh, invention uh, uh, in mathematics, uh, such as uh, the invention of uh, the microscope in uh, biology. In mathematics, uh, we can analyze uh, in depth the behavior of function in a, in, in a, uh, in, in, in near a certain point uh, can be uh, magnified with this uh, universal quantifiers. Mm -hmm. And uh, And uh, yeah, we will learn more and more. And uh, I already gave you the homeworks and uh, we did the solutions. And so you can take a look and uh, if you have any questions and make it uh, in Q&A. If you don't have a questions, still make a comment in Q&A before uh, Sunday. That's your uh, today's attendance. Any questions?